morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Singularity Tech Day today. Um, also, from the organization, they remind me that you have the Q&A in one of the tabs uh, above. So you can just ask me whatever you want from this talk that I'm going to do that is uh, entitled The Hitchhiker Guide to Your Users. So thanks uh, to all the uh, different uh, sponsors that we have this year with us here in, in this Singularity Tech Day. It's going to be an amazing day. Um, and I wanted to start with a question in here. So I wanted to know what makes really a great product as it is so great. So someone may think that a great product is one that fulfills a real necessity or try to deeply fill the needs of the, of the users and try to uh, make some kind of uh, product for them. Other ones want to deliver a singular value uh, due to this uh, value proposition that it has this product. Another one can be that this product is simple and intuitive. It depends on how you can use it and it is user friendly. And other ones can say that has a great design. It's made from people that understand this design and are the ones that are using this type of product. It's kind of, if you think about bicycles, maybe people that are involved in the designing are also wanted to just ride them after doing the entire stuff. And also can be one of the differential things that is doing the technological stuff in a correct way. But in all these steps, what we didn't say anything was about where is the user? And one of the top uh, uh, phrases that we have here, and also one of the things uh, that made so great of Steve Jobs, was that customers doesn't know what they want until we've shown them. But also, he was not about uh, talking about um, the product is not done without the user. Uh, anyways, he was thinking about going from the user backwards to to the, to the designing process and trying to put the user inside the loop. So after we have this user and study him or her, we are going to just develop uh, our product and try to put inside more technology. But why I told you this? The idea is to how can we became a product, a customer-centric product, so we have inside this uh, user. So the idea that we can just start the process was to try to be in a daily life of our user. So we are trying to know more about the pains that it has. Also, we have to recollect uh, data from our users. So it is awesome to try to test and try to innovate with them and recollect all this data from there. Also try to create new necessities. It was one, but I was, saying about we have to be customer centric and we have to uh, have the customer inside the loop. And how can we uh, try to get this user inside? So I was thinking about, um, sorry. I was thinking about AI and causality. They are the two, uh, two characteristics that can make uh, this happen. So we can try to get inside the user uh, in the loop. So before starting this talk, I'm going to present myself. I am Eduardo Matallanas. I'm the head of AI here in Plain Concepts. Um, I was inter I'm really interested in AI, robotics, and a lot of machine learning. I'm more transitioning to more mathematics and statistics. Um, I love data, and I have been doing things in data since, to, uh, I think, it was for, for 12 years now. So it's a lot of time. I love going by bike, and also I'm a martial arts practitioner. So what I'm going to do today, so we are going to talk a lot about user, customer, and be a customer-centric um, <clears throat> product, uh, trying to use machine learning and, and causality. Also, we are going to talk about some statistics in, in between, and how can we combine these AI plus causality inside. 
And remember, there are a lot of questions that when we are going to uh, say today that maybe have answers, maybe not. It depends on how are we going to play to play the different problems that we have ahead. So I wanted to start uh, from how to become this user centric, as I talked before. So we need a lot of data right now. We need to monitor our users, try to measure their behavior, try to test, analyze, and try to put these users uh, in the loop. Also, we need to use a lot of AI and ML to try to extract different correlation and trying to extract insights, uh, data, and more analytics insights. But why we really uh, select a product? We can know only using AI and machine learning. We need another, uh, another um, algorithms or maybe another answer to this question that can be answered by causality. So why we need causality if we already have AI? So one of the problems that we have with AI is that it only extracts uh, correlations, uh, correlations and try to extract trends from data. It doesn't have a real deep knowledge about that. As you can see in this picture in here, we can see that how correlated is the number of operations of Nicolas Cage in films and the number of people that drone in pools. So a, model, a machine learning model can learn this correlation and treat the data in the same way, but they are different contexts. Another thing that is that uh, AI often uh, just find spurious uh, correlations. We can see here the slow and um, different uh, here pan chocolate um, that are really, really uh, similar. But sometimes as we don't have this data, maybe inside the, the model, we have another problem that is that we didn't generalize correctly our models. Sometimes if this data is not inside the data set at the beginning for the training, we experiment different uh, problems uh, with the inference of the model, or as we can see in the other uh, example, we can have different views of data that we have from the, from the input, like text and maybe the image, we can have a problem in there and deceive our model. And that is why they are not getting um, the <clears throat> real reasons inside the data or trying to how to know more about uh, why they are having this uh, answer. Also, we have a problem that uh, right now we are trying to solve with some sub values and try to uh, understand the future importance of the models, but uh, still, uh, we have like a lot of black model, black box models uh, in which we don't know what is happening inside. Um, that's the problem as we need to have to take decisions over these uh, models and we have to mm, make them uh, more auditable from the outside. Also, we have another problem related with fairness as the distribution set, it can just make some changes in the data and we are not learning the real reasons behind those data, only correlation. And that can make some kind of shift in the distributions. Um, also, we have a, in here that is a really important thing that if we wanted to go to a human-like AI, we need to try to use them for decision-making. But we cannot do that as they are trying to put, uh, as they act in the environment, those information goes inside the, the data and we have uh, here a feedback loop that could uh, make these models not work anymore. So what is causality? According to the Merovingian in Matrix, you see that causality is an action and reactions, but what is more formally causation? So we are trying to infer the effect of the treatment policy, in this case T, in some outcome Y. So for example, imagine that we have that uh, we have a lot of people that sleep with shoes and the next day they just get up with a headache. So trying to find the, the, the causal effect of this relationship, we saw that in this population of people, they were drinking the night before. So they went to just sleep with the shoes put on and the other day they have this headache, horrible headache. So this is the confounding uh, association 
that it is making this reason about the, how you sleep with shoes and you have a headache the next day. And the total association in this, in this way is the cause and effect that we identify at the beginning plus this compounding one that is uh, the reason behind all this, uh, all this behavior. So there is a difference between AI and causality and causal inference. The one is that in supervised learning, uh, we have this train and test data. They have similar distribution. And what we are going to do is just predict uh, the outcome or try to estimate this outcome. But in causal inference, we don't have the same distribution in training and testing because we have, uh, as we are trying to do one, um, changing one, only one characteristic at a time, we cannot see this, uh, what, we, what will happen in the future if this didn't change. So we have, we need to have two walls at the same time. The one in which changed the feature and the one that we didn't change. So it is impossible. So the idea is that this causal inference is try to act in the data and ask for questions inside to see if they can extract the regions uh, inside those uh, distribution of data. So more formally, um, causal causation can be defined as the treatment that causes an outcome if and only if changing that uh, treatment leads to a change in the outcome. And with all the world keep a uh, constant. So we need the real world in which we change the, um, the, this treatment, but also we need to estimate the counterfactual world in which we didn't change it. So it's a bit hard in this way and it is a challenge for causality to try to have the two effects inside the outcome. So the causal effect is the magnitude by which the outcome is changed by one unit um, of, of the treatment. And the mathematical expression is in here. I mean, just try to measure this effect in this way with the changing in the treatment. I know that we, it can be very complicated, but uh, causation can be divided if we just look in this representation that Judy Appel in the book of why is so. Um, he divided uh, causation in three steps. The first one is more related with association and seen, and it is about the difference, uh, the, the machine learning and deep learning models that we have right now. They are trying to associate from data and try to extract the correlations and try to extract the trends in the data. Then if we move forward to another step, the second one is the one related with intervention and doing, and it is more related to this one with the causal inference. So the idea is that once we have the data and recollected all the data, can we make some questions to act in this data and try to extract from them different reasons and characteristics? And the last one that is the counterfactual one, and it is related with the imagining. It is more about the future and what, what will we happen if we change any of the data that we have. This is also uh, a challenge right now um, because this step is more related in how humans behave. And it is very difficult to have right now inside the, the machine learning inside of deep learning, but with causality, we can make this go forward and beyond and try to go to this step. So <clears throat> don't panic and let's go with an example. Uh, we are going to start with uh, trying to solve this question in here. That is what makes really a great uh, rating or reservation in a reservation. So using the Airbnb data, uh, we are going to just explore this and try to make some assumptions to model these causal relationships. So the idea was to just use the data coming from inside Airbnb. This is one of the web page in which you can find all the web spread uh, from the Airbnb uh, direct web page. And what I'm going to do is going, I'm going to use my location here in Madrid. Uh, I'm from Vallecas, so I have to uh, go for Madrid in this one. Um, also, we are going to uh, try to use the user reviews as we wanted to know how many people come from the, from the different uh, years and, and months. So first one, the first association that we have is maybe that the rating comes from location. So 
good locations can improve the rating. Also, price is very related, right? We wanted to pay less and have a fantastical um, listing. So price could be related to, to the rating. Also, maybe the revenue as the host try to invest more in their accommodations, they are trying to make it better for you. So uh, having more revenue or uh, estimated revenue higher is going to influence this uh, rating. Also, if we drip, drop down the different reviews that we can have, we can see the correlations between them. And we can see that the value is directly related with the, with, the, with the rating and also the accuracy. It is very important that the description, it is exactly the same as the, uh, as the host described it as expectations. Uh, they are, they imply like a lot of uh, direct satisfaction over our users. And also I tried to explore a bit more and make a decision tree in this case to make a feature uh, selection from our data set. Okay. Um, then uh, what I was saying is that I built a model to just select some features and <clears throat> I put more features about the host and you see if it has different information, the pictures, accommodations and uh, everything and other features related with the reviews, for example, frequency, uh, also the number of reviews, the availability, if we can book instantaneously. And what can we use to build this model? Uh, I'm going to use the, this library coming from Microsoft. Um, the research of causality, they created this library that can help us to model any causal inference. And this DuBois framework is divided in four steps. The first one is the model. So in here, we are going to create from the assumptions that we have uh, before, location, price, and everything, we are going to try to uh, create a causal graph in which we can see the implications of the different uh, inputs and the output, also the outcome and the treatment, and see how they are related. So we are going to build this uh, model. Then we are, we, we are going to identify which are the values or the different <clears throat> features that inside this causal graph is uh, making this confounding selection. And the next step is to estimate. As we said before, we have this real world and this counterfactual world, and we need to estimate uh, both of them to have the entire uh, chain of values. So we need to just see if uh, these uh, variables that we have identified, how are they influencing the, the outcome and the treatment? And finally, we are going to just evaluate and refute if our assumptions were correct or not. So the first step is building this causal model. I create a causal model uh, with using a direct graph. I didn't put the code in here, but this is going to be available in GitHub as I'm going to upload the, the notebook that where I build the entire example. But <clears throat> to see the graph, in here we can see that we have also this host info in here and also we have the listening information that we have reviews frequencies and also number of bedrooms bathrooms and price the location here and finally this will be our treatment this listing of info there is this and um, we are going to try to identify which listings uh, have a great great score and that was the idea how which of these assumptions that we have are going to change this, uh, this causal graph. So we are going to try to identify these causes and we are with this simple um, uh, sentence in here, we are going to identify them and it's uh, making all this for us and we obtain this. Uh, some of them, as you can see, we have the price, location, also some listening information. But do you remember the one that I told you about the estimated revenue? The one that said that maybe investing more in the in the host, so in the in the accommodation. Sorry, it didn't it didn't appear here. So 
this estimated revenue, it didn't have anything to do with rating. Also, another one that can be extracted from here is that the number of listings that the host has also didn't uh, have any information uh, inside there. Um, and we can also see here, uh, so sorry, uh, we can also see here, these are all the variables that influence in the, in the rating and in the listings. And how can we estimate them? We are going to just go through an stratification of the different distributions that we have. And the idea was to see if how this effect is going. So they influence positively all of them in the rating score. So the bigger they are, the bigger score are going to have. And also just to check that all our assumptions are correct, we are going to just make this uh, refute, uh, this refuse test in which we are going to check if the, all the assumptions are correct. And we can see that uh, it didn't change. So, okay, we are right and all the assumptions were finally good. So how can we just join this ML AI class causal inference? So machine learning is given causal inference, a better estimations and trying to uh, understand the reputation of causal effects. And on the other side, causal inference is trying to make machine learning more generalized and robust and try to, uh, this is the beginning of fairness and explanations inside machine learning. So could be good to have causal inference inside and we can just advance in the ladder of causation with this uh, association of the two of them. So just to conclude, um, I wanted to say that a causal inference is a key for trying to go for a strong AI approach and then it's also help uh, transferability, generalization, fairness, and explainability. And uh, causal plus ML is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. They are going to be, they are here and they can help each other. So we can just have a more generalistic, uh, for example, a smart models in which we can just have and bring the, the user inside. But there, there's not only beautiful things inside, we all have also challenges. Um, we cannot measure this counterfactual world, so it is difficult to make some uh, validations and data alone is not enough. Uh, we have also multiple model representations um, as we are making the assumptions and creating this graph and uh, also we need some dom domain of knowledge in, in here to try to do it. I have one more thing, but I prefer that you just uh, ask me some more questions. So if you have any question in here, uh, just let me put it on, we can just answer. So if you don't have any question, I'm going further. Um, okay, so something is pretty clear right now. So I wanted to add a little more and go for uplifting modeling that uh, can be the next uh, clue that you can have for your user and personalization. So uh, in the beginning it was more related with, um, with A-B tests and try to test with your users and do an homogeneous treatment effect in which in one of the, of the, of the two, um, in one of the, one of the groups uh, win to the other, uh, you are going to apply the entire feature to the to the whole population. But then, right now, with data causal causality, causality and machine learning, we can just go for uplifting modeling and try to personalize uh, these uh, behaviors. So the idea was the next. So imagine that we have a control group in which we just give them some mobile phones and a treatment group in which we gave them some telephones or ones and <coughs> we wanted to measure uh, this um, effect that they have. So for example, some of them likes the, the new mobile phone, some of them likes more the telephone and some of them didn't matter, it doesn't matter. They like both of them or maybe they don't like any of them. So with that conditional, average treatment effect, that is the one that is making uplift 
on, on the bottom of that, uh, we can just apply the different products inside the, the different inside the population. So what we are doing is just rather than going to apply the same product to all of them, we are going to just try to find the ones that convert better and put inside to try to give them what they want. So with this, what we are gaining in here is not only having increasing the satisfaction of the product inside the for the users, but also uh, we are making them uh, giving them what they want and we are making our revenue bigger are as they are uh, buying more. So thank you. I'm just going to check if we have more uh, questions in here. So, okay, if you have any questions, you have my email or even my Twitter, feel free to just ask me whatever you want. Um, it has been a wonderful uh, time here, even though we have some problems with the audio and everything, but thank you so much. And I hope that you have a great day today and enjoy all the different tags that we have. Thank you so much.